Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Once thought impossible, a recent study shows that people in their 90s can actually make new brain cells. On the show today, Bob and Raleigh discuss the new science of neurogenesis and the importance of keeping your brain healthy and active to avoid neurological disease and degradation. They also identify natural ways to keep your mind sharp and talk about brain supplements known as nootropics that can help elevate neurological function so you can stay on your A-game. So sit back, relax, and get ready to live forever young. So, hello everyone. I'm Bob Gilpatrick. This is Live Forever Young Radio. Welcome everyone. I'm here with Raleigh Culp. Raleigh, how are you doing today? Good, Bob. How are you doing, man? Great, great. So this is going to be a really fun podcast to do here. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, the whole this. issue of brain power and nootropics is really something that gained a lot of attention recently when the movie Limitless came out with Bradley Cooper. Yep, that's a good one. Yep. And people started asking, is there really such a thing as a limitless pill? Right. right? It actually sparked so, a lot of people uh, searching for stuff like that if it really existed online. Yeah. Kind of so. It turns out there are pills that people can take that do boost their brain, your brain power. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that later on in the show. Yeah. But just to let people know how we're going to do this, we're going to first talk about what causes a depletion of your brain power as you get older. And there's mm-hmm. many different reasons and mm-hmm. factors to consider. And then we're going to talk about what you can do about it. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, I'm sure you knew this, but I don't know if you guys out there knew this. Did you know that a while ago, a long time ago, not even that long ago, a couple years ago, we weren't sure or we thought that people, as they got older, they stopped making new brain cells. Actually, like the production of them just completely stopped altogether. But um, a study done by the University of Madrid, uh, it actually shows that humans can make brain cells, new brain cells. Uh, up until their 90s, which is pretty cool because recently, before then, we didn't think that that was possible. And one of the really cool things, I don't know if it's cool, but it's, it's, it lets you know how important brain health is and, and the creation of, of, of healthy brain cells is, is it shows that even though we can make new brain cells up until our 90s and older maybe, um, it shows that the, the, the production of them, it slows down significantly as you age. So... Um, you're going to want to make the healthiest brain cells that you can. As we make new brain cells, as healthy as you can make them is key. And that's kind of part of why we wanted to go over what causes more degeneration and then what we could do about it. Yes, so this you know new science of, of creating new brain cells they refer to as neurogenesis. Correct. So, Neurogenesis is the creation of new neurons in your brain. And not only that, Raleigh, but you also make new connections. Mm-hmm. Right? So you're, they say that you want to wire neurons together, mm-hmm. right? And your brain is a, is a vast network of neurons that are connected together mm-hmm. in these intricate patterns. And even into your 90s, you can create new connections. You can learn new things that require you to make new connections. And then as you use new skills, continue on with your, um, you know, your, your puzzles that you might want to work on and things like that, right. you can end up you know, having a very powerful brain for a long, long time throughout your life. So we know that aging is one of the reasons for your brain power to kind of fade because you're not... Not because you can't make new brain cells, but because you're not making as many. So, again, healthier the better. But what are some other things that people deal with that that make their brain power fade over time? Well, with age also, people get what's just generally classified as dementia. And Mm. dementia is people losing their ability to focus and concentrate and a lot of times associated with with memory, short-term memory, mm-hmm. and even long-term memories. Um, I worked for a long time in nursing homes where there are a lot of people with dementia, and we did a lot of research in the field of dementia in the nursing homes. Mm-hmm. And as people got got older, their circulation 
would become, you know, less efficient. Mm -hmm. And so they would have what they call vascular dementia, which can be caused by just general diminishment of circulation, or it can be caused by a whole series of mini strokes Mm -hmm. and um, can also be, uh, you know, be caused by impingements Mm -hmm. or blocked arteries, that type of thing. And, And so these blocking, that what they're blocking is, Oxygen and nutri- nutrients, mainly yeah. oxygen, right? Mm-hmm. That's yes. what's causing the strokes and right. things like that. Yeah, well, the uh, stroke is normally caused by an occlusion mm-hmm. where there's, you know, a blockage of a particular artery mm-hmm. or a group of capillaries in your brain that starves that part of the brain mm-hmm. of oxygen and actually will kill off brain cells. Oh, okay. okay? Um, so that's, you know, dementia in general, whether it's Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, mm-hmm. Lewy body's dementia, um, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is the concussion induced yeah. dementia. A lot of football players recently, um, I mean, they're definitely going through mm-hmm. it. Uh, professional wrestlers that I know of have, have dealt with it. It's, it's a serious thing. You don't realize the long term effects until too late in a lot of cases with the CTE. And so that's a cause, but we can talk about that too, because inflammation is a precipitating factor to the symptoms of CTE. So we'll talk about that later, but also toxins is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Human beings are very absorbing and (laughs) very gelatinous. We absorb toxins from the air, from our food, from water, Mm -hmm. through our skin, and, and people need to have a a strategy for detoxifying their body on a regular basis, mm-hmm. or it's going to also cause problems with your brain as it's going to cause with the rest of your body. Mm-hmm. So too much, you know, pesticides in particular is really bad mm-hmm. for your brain. So the other thing is poor diet. A right. lot of people will um, start to diminish their brain power from eating too much sugar, mm-hmm. too much processed foods. Now that's a lot of the times is because a lot of the processed foods don't have a lot, of, lot, if any, nutrition. Not only that, but they have they have inflammatory compounds in them too. Trans fats mm. and dif- different preservatives also cause inflammation in your brain. Mm. So inflammation in your brain in general can be caused by many things, and it's a big reason why people have trouble with their brain power as they age. But, wow. And then not only what you are eating, like sugar and trans fats, but what you're not getting enough of, Mm -hmm. which is particularly vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. People aren't out in the sun as much, but lack of vitamin D has a really profound effect. Mm -hmm. And other nutrients as well that we'll talk about in a little bit Mm -hmm. is really important. But also, perhaps one of the biggest things is anxiety. Right. So if you were to go to a course, a memory course, to improve your memory, the very first thing the instructors do is teach people to meditate so they can calm their anxiety Hmm. because nothing blocks your ability to learn and remember more than anxiety. Really? And there's a lot of anxiety in this day and age. Here we are in the beginning part of 2021. Mm -hmm. We just coming through everything that happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. People have a lot of concerns, a lot of anxiety, and we'll talk about some ways to do that. But as you know, Raleigh, back 10, 15 shows ago, we did a whole show on anxiety yep. techniques for yeah, how to, anxiety. Yeah, how to manage stress and anxiety specifically mm-hmm. during these trying times. Um, you know, just real quick aside about the anxiety. You know, that's really what you said about nothing blocks your ability to learn more than anxiety. You know, that really is true. Uh, I have a daughter. She's at school. And uh, she doesn't have an anxiety issue. But there are times that if she doesn't quite feel sure about the test that she's taking, she'll get anxious and she will tell me. She'll say, hey, I had a real hard time focusing because I got anxious. So what we do is we um, we actually created a thing, schooltestprep.com, uh, with a character named Johan. Uh, we put a video up there that shows people, well, kids in particular, how to use our tapping technique that we use a lot on the show to help calm test anxiety because really what you're helping to do is is interrupt that pattern of anxiety and plug in a new belief that you don't need to be anxious anymore and that you have the answers and it's just the idea of the test that's got you right elevated so i just wanted to bring that up because i i have especially because my daughter 
she st obviously couldn't finish school in 2020. But then when she started up, we waited about a semester to have her go back. And so that whole time being out of school just creates a general anxiety because you haven't been there, right. you know. And so just the thought of going back creates anxiety and then having to take the test and things like that. So, But we've been dealing with it real good. We've actually been using a lot of not just the school test prep information, but tapping itself and the, yeah. and the ultimate mind calming exercise, mm -hmm. the head circles that we always do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's helped. It's helped considerably. So it's proof that it happens even with kids, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And kids are affected by poor diet as well. Right. And um, children like adults have to have a good balance of bacteria in their gut because a lot of what's happening in your brain is related to your gut. So mm -hmm. your gut has a, a series of pathways where the food that you eat, particularly fruits and vegetables and supplements like resveratrol, curcumin, things like that, they will act as, as an activator to the DNA in your bacteria mm -hmm. that are in your gut. And this then stimulates the creation of metabolites and that can further trigger human DNA for the creation of proteins. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what it ends up making are the precursors for your neurotransmitters. So in order to feel calm and happy and not be in an anxious state or a depressed state, to have a balance of norepinephrine and dopamine and serotonin in your brain. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that depends on the veracity of your microbiome in right. your gut. So we've the, heard a lot about that with the, they refer to it as the uh, brain gut connection. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and then last couple of things, Raleigh, in terms of causes is mm -hmm. one is hormone balance. Sure. So if people are having imbalance of hormones, they're not going to be really having a very good day. Typical, like um, a woman who is going through menopause mm -hmm. and is getting hot flashes. Right. This is a hormone imbalance. And, and similarly, if you have adrenal exhaustion mm -hmm. or if you are very low in testosterone, you're going to have a hard time focusing and concentrating. And the last thing is really is the creation of energy itself. So your brain, even though it's very small in comparison to your body, uses a disproportionate amount of energy. Okay. So you have to produce energy in the Krebs cycle, which is a metabolic pathway inside your mitochondria, the little powerhouses in right. your cell. And they're in charge of making adenosine triphosphate, your right. molecule of energy, and your brain needs a lot of that. Mm. So if in general you're low in energy because you don't taking in the right nutrition to stimulate the creation of ATP, ATP then you're going to have a problem with brain power. So from what we know about the brain, there's a lot of electricity and electrical connections that go there. So you couldn't do that if you didn't have energy, I would assume. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. They call it the electron transport chain and it's power in your brain. And you, in order for um, these neurotransmitters that we're talking about, mm -hmm. for example, serotonin, serotonin is created and it's like these metaphorical little BBs of serotonin, mm -hmm. and they have to fire across a synapse right. into a receptor like cell. A bridge. Yep. And at that receptor cell, when the serotonin arrives, it triggers another metabolic pathway that ultimately results in you feeling alive, awake, ready and, to roll, and happy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so there are reasons why you might not be able to have that happen. One is, have you made enough serotonin okay to make it right and, and which is made from tryptophan right. right which you have to trace the whole metabolic pathway and ultimately it relates to nutrition mm -hmm. and so then you also have to have that little bb of serotonin has to move across the synapse this transition bridge and arrive and so if you have too little serotonin, too few receptor cells, mm -hmm. or not enough electrical potential to at get, the synapse. Right, to get through the right. synapse. Yeah. Then you're going to have low brain chemistry, mm. right? And this is, you know, relates to, can relate to both depression and anxiety, yeah. and certainly 
your capability of functioning at a higher level, the things that human beings do, being able to read and write and communicate and create and execute. Yeah, with the way you be affected. With the way you describe it, it seems like depression and um, dementia would would look similar if you looked at them that way. Yeah, and very often um, people who have do have dementia. Mm-hmm get depressed also Mm -hmm. and quite often also people who are depressed also exhibit signs of dementia yeah and i could see that yeah and so you want to just be aware of that because it's hard to tell which is which and which is causing the other so you want to be aware and open to the fact that dementia could actually be depression which could be fixed by getting rid of the sugar Mm -hmm. getting rid of the the processed foods, making sure there's enough vitamin D, enough vitamin C, right. all that kind of thing. Well, 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 you know, we talk about all the things that cause it, and, and, and you know, one of the best things that I know, that I've heard and I've read about that you can do to keep your brain power functioning is use it. <laughs> you know, use your brain like muscles. you got to work yeah. them out or you lose them. And right. so one of the things that I remember reading, I think it was a couple of years ago, was uh, uh, people who do brain teasers and puzzles and and read uh, well into old age, their brain health is always more functioning and better at a higher level than someone who, again, doesn't use it. You don't use it, you lose it. So I think one of the simplest things we could do is pick up a book. You know, we talked in the last show with Dave Spinelli, tried to do it, he was trying to read a book a month. We was, our mm-hmm. show called All, All About Fitness with David Spinelli. And he was talking about how he's trying to read a book a month. Well, we've had plenty of time over the last couple months with COVID. If you weren't working, pick up a book. If you're uh, retired and you know you want something to do, pick up a, a Sudoku book and figure out those numbers and, mm-hmm. and keep that Keep that fresh because it's really easy to sit in front of the TV and let the TV tell you what to do and yeah. all that. So think for yourself, and that'll help out. That and in addition to that physical exercise well, right. yes, is going to help with your circulation, <clears throat> particularly exercise you do for your quadricep muscles, the yeah. upper muscles in your legs. You were saying there's they a, have a connection. There's a direct neuronal connection from your quads to your brain and the stronger your quads are the better your brain is going to function so any type of exercise should include resistance exercise whether it's just your own body weight or against stretch band Mm -hmm. or weights where you're doing deep knee bends so Mm -hmm. to speak and they don't have to be deep knee bends but knee bends of some type where you're squatting up and down until you feel your legs are really well exhausted then you're going to have very much stronger legs it's funny you say the quads uh i must be really smart because i used to play uh hockey and i was a goaltender and all you do is go up and down and up and down on your quads there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know maybe i got hit in the head too many times that might have offset my you're, strength yeah, of my a quads bit of cte going on. <laughs> oh, so that's not good. speaking of cte so CTE is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is, they refer to it as the concussion disease. So people that have had concussions, whether it's from an accident or people that have had constant concussions from playing football, soccer, hockey, uh, um, hockey, (laughs) and also, um, you know, rugby, anything like that. Yeah. And particularly people that have been in battle, in a war, Mm. the, the explosions, cause the equivalent of about 30 concussions all at once because your oh brain God. rattles in your head when there's an explosion nearby. Wow. And so, okay. so people that are military and military retired are very susceptible to CTE mm. unless they keep their inflammation down. So I didn't think about that, yep. but that's right. That, an explosion is just the same thing as getting hit in the head with a baseball bat or something. It's way worse. Yeah. So Raleigh, you mentioned hockey and a number of years ago is a very famous hockey player that had a very, very severe um, Mm -hmm. concussion. Mm -hmm. And at around the same time, there was a very famous football player who had an extremely severe concussion, and both of them were out. They couldn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. They were not recovering from their concussion. And they ended up going for neurobiofeedback treatment, which Mm -hmm. is a highly sophisticated technique where you put 
a, a leather helmet on your head and has all these sensors that are measuring your brain waves. And by um, having a skilled um, therapist there, a neurobiofeedback therapist, they can actually help um, change the brain waves that are going on in various parts of your brain, and the symptoms of the concussion will go away. Hmm. All right. So, uh, what's apparently happening is the blunt force is not only causing bruising in the brain, but it's somehow locking in a brain wave pattern in parts of your brain that's not supposed to be that brain wave pattern. Right? And so with neurobiofeedback, you can actually train that part of your brain to go back to the way it was before. And both of these athletes were able to go back and perform. One of them, the football player, um, set, a, set a major record the very first game that he went back. Right? Wow, okay. And so, um, and without using their names, right. they did recover and they were all-star players that were able to get back um, to playing hmm. from using that technique. So neurobiofeedback. Neurobiofeedback. Okay. Right? Now, the other thing's very important in, in relation to CTE, there's a study that shows that people can have the potential for CTE, um, which is the inflammation uh, in their brain, but if they're able to keep their overall inflammation down, both in their brain and in their body, they won't exhibit any symptoms of CTE. Wow. So if you have a concussion plus inflammation, you can have CTE, right? But a concussion without inflammation, no CTE, hmm. right? And so there's many things you can do to reduce your inflammation right. all throughout your body. And we had a show on we that We talk one about also. this a lot because right. the inflammation is the, obviously the stem of almost everything. You know. Yeah, and so we had a whole show that was on free radicals yep. and inflammation. But in general, the easiest way to do it is stay away from inflammatory foods we already mentioned, which right. is the sugars and the processed foods. Right, it's Trans causing fats, inflammation. You don't want any of that yep. stuff. And the other is to ingest compounds that are anti inflammatory. Correct. So you have compounds like superoxide dismutase trimethylglycine, glutathione, some proanthocyanins, right. and the ACE vitamins, A, C, and E, and minerals like selenium and zinc are all anti-inflammatory. Right. Also, uh, we, there's turmeric, and as well as you could use ashwagandha. Yeah. Resveratrol mm -hmm. is very helpful. Um, those are uh, the, uh, resveratrol is polyphenol type. Uh, yeah. Lignans uh, with their SDG in there is very powerful antioxidant too. That can help lower inflammation right. throughout. And the, the less inflammation, the better. <laughs> Absolutely, for all, every aspect of your life. So if people want to know about that, um, how to go about getting all those compounds together in an easy to use little kit, yep. right, a system. Let us know. You can, you can let us know. The other aspect to that is, of course, you know, for your circulation, for your body to have good circulation, right. you have to have an adequate supply of phosphatidylcholine mm -hmm. and arginine. And when you get the right type of health um, system that you can use, you can address all those issues. You can improve your circulation and you can reduce your inflammation at the same time with a two minute type of easy to use you know, um, nutritional intervention that you can just use first thing in the morning. Really One quick. of the best things you can do for your brain power is to feed your brain with good fats. Right. right. We talked about that. Omega-3s are great. Mid-chain triglycerides yep. from MCTs. coconut oil, palm oil, really good for your brain. And then, of course, things that help with the circulation and things that help with the Krebs cycle. Because right. Because Talk about needing enough energy. Energy for the for the synapses right. and, and the serotonin. Yeah. And so you need to have B vitamins, right. coenzyme Q10. Mm -hmm. And and again, with one health system, you can have all those in the same health system and address the Krebs cycle energy making system as well. Right. And get your the good ATP. fats and your vitamin D and, mm -hmm. and it's all in one complete, easy to use place instead of 20 different pills trying to guess. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, a system like this can also give you the right probiotics, so mm -hmm. your gut-brain connection can function properly. Up to the up to the brain. Yep. Yeah. And then the other thing is going back to the limitless. Yes. Well, don't forget about the uh, nootropics. nootropics. Nootropics 
you know, toward the mind mm -hmm. it are pills usually, sometimes powders, sometimes liquids mm -hmm. that um, have a specific positive benefit for your brain. Right. And so you can get, um, you can get a, a range of products, some of them like um, what we call Clarity Factor has a number of different compounds in there a stack together. It's a stack and includes like phosphatidylserine yep. and um, St. John's Ward, et cetera. Yep. And so when you put together a stack, it'll help many different aspects of your brain. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's another well-known um, nootropic that's called Neurofuel. Very good one. It, it combines coleus and artichoke as an active ingredient. That one has a, a proprietary formula, doesn't it? Yes, it that has actually... a proprietary formula. You can get it from us, but it's someone else's patented right. formula. Very, very effective for upregulating a a neurotransmitter called CAMP, C-AMP, which floats your other neurotransmitters up in equal amounts so you don't get an imbalance. You know who I heard uses that? The people over at SpaceX. The SpaceX scientists, the Tesla scientists use this, use this to enhance their brain power for their very intensive um, sessions of inventing and engineering. And, and yeah, the like. I mean, think so. about it. You're getting a rocket to land upright. Mm -hmm. You exactly. gotta be focused for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So here's another thing, Raleigh, is the use of pulsed electromagnetic fields. Right. We talked about how the body is created on the Earth, and the Earth has these fields. Yeah, and the pulse is coming from the core of the Earth. Right. The core of the Earth is rotating, and mm -hmm. the Earth is rotating, creating motion, and so it's creating this, and it's a, and it's magnetic. Right? right. And so it's creating electromagnetisms coming up and it's affecting our bodies in a positive way, mm -hmm. including to dilate our capillaries so that the blood can flow to all the tissue in our body. Right. And there are there's new devices now that have a power supply that produces those those waves that are coming from the core of the earth. And you can hook it up to a mat, lie on the mat a couple times a day for eight minutes and you'll increase your circulation by almost 30% yeah. using those PEMF Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about this with Ann on the show we did called The yeah. Importance of Circulation for Your Health. We did, and, and there is evidence in studies and a lot of anecdotal evidence that people that use these mats can dramatically improve their cognition, especially if they have some type of dementia, hmm. particularly a vascular dementia. Right, with the where, blockages. Right, and so by by expanding the capillaries mm -hmm. um, wider and more frequently, you're able to get more blood to the brain, more oxygen, more nutrients like phosphatidylserine mm -hmm. will get, get to the brain. While we're talking about astronauts, actually, I think NASA uses the, the, the PMF phenomena on astronauts when they get back from space because when they're in zero gravity, their, right. their body is away from that pulsed field from the Earth. Right. Right, so it's their circulation doesn't work as well, and the, uh, you've heard. I think we've. I don't know if we've talked about it before, but astronauts lose muscle right. while they're up there because there's no right. resistance. Exactly. And so when they get back, in order to get their body back into shape, one of the things they do is re-expose them to the pulsed electromagnetic fields because they've been out too far away. Right. So that's pretty cool. It's very. It's it's. It's very true, and it's a very effective device that people can um, talk to us about if you're mm -hmm. interested in getting one for yourself. Yep, we do have information on that. You can call us at 1-800-861-4609, and just like in the podcast, Anne's the guru on that. So she yep. she helps us here. She's usually in. You can mm -hmm. ask for her if you want to know more about that. Exactly. Now, the other thing is, Raleigh, is this whole concept of state-dependent memory. Mm -hmm. And we talked earlier about the anxiety aspect. Right. And so this is this is really important for people to be able to manage their anxiety. Right. And so we had talked in previous um, in in the in the podcast about anxiety, we talked about the device called Inner Balance. Yes. And Inner Balance from the HeartMath company is 
the the device that you clip onto your ear. Yep. And we're going to do a whole show just on that. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll bring the ones we have and we'll use them and we'll actually and show you the, show you what the I'll do some editing magic and I'll show you what it looks like as you use it and the scorecards afterwards. Yeah. So. But essentially, what it's doing is it's helping you to reset a metabolic pathway in your brain that goes from your frontal cortex to your heart muscle, which has about 40,000 neurons in your heart muscle, neurites. That's going. right. That's and right. then this, that, that signal comes to your heart. Your heart rate variability changes based on what it's being told. Mm -hmm. And then it sends a signal of one type or another to your amygdala, which is the seat of your brain, which is deciding whether or not everything's okay right. and we need to be under stress. Okay? And so by using the HeartMath device, it's gamified where you get some feedback mm -hmm. as to how well you're doing with syncing your breath rhythmically mm -hmm. and focusing on gratitude. Right. right? The gratitude's they, the key. They, yes. Because they say that the average person in the United States is of the opinion that everything is okay only 5% of the time. So there's 95% that we're going crazy with anxiety because we don't think right. we're okay. And it's sometimes it's it's sub-awareness you're not really even sure you're doing this mm. but your heart rate variability is the key to knowing whether or not that's happening mm. because so it's a window into this metabolic pathway that you wouldn't otherwise have wow. without the device and so with the device you can now sync your breath rhythmically right focus on gratitude and what happens is is your heart starts to beat differently, and so it now sends a different signal to your amygdala. Right. The amygdala will calm down. It'll mm. vibrate differently, the cells, and it sends a different message that it sends through the hippocampus and gets like a boost to the frontal cortex, and the frontal cortex goes, hmm, it seems like everything is okay. Hmm. Right? And then it sends a signal to your heart muscle, and it goes, hello, heart muscle, everything's okay. Your heart begins to beat differently, signals your amygdala, signals your frontal cortex, and now you've broken the loop that you were stuck in of everything is not okay. Right. And by focusing on gratitude, that's the opposite of everything of what, is not okay. I was just going to say, of what everything's right. wrong. And, it, and you're getting feedback from the device, which has a transponder. It's communicating to your cell phone. You get to see how you're doing staying focused. It's true, actually. You get a whole readout of the yeah. chart and it actually it's beautiful it, it gives you the ability to see where your spikes come and where they go right and and if you can if you do a short session and you kind of recall what you thought you'll be like that's right right in the middle of me thinking about this i don't know like if your phone rings i notice if i'm doing it and say my phone rings and yeah. i forgot to turn it off right it's right like, right oh, when that man. rings i turn and it's got a spike up in the right, right. it's like oh man yeah. your body and mind are very sensitive to each other right and it's very interesting to use this these things only cost 159 dollars but the amazing, insight amazing investment the insight they gave you yeah. into your own into your own health right. and mentally and and heart wise is is invaluable it really yeah. it really is and cool. so this relates to what we're talking about with state-dependent memory. Right, state-dependent. So it, what it means is that if you're in a particular emotional state while you're learning something, mm -hmm. I'm reading this paper, and I'm feeling nice and calm, and I'm going, okay, these are the 10 points, and then you now are going to ask me to give them back to you, and there's a consequence if I don't. Okay. If if I don't tell you these ten points in order, there's going to be an electric shock. Okay? Oh man! So now guess what? There's anxiety. I don't. Okay? I don't want to get these wrong. <laughs> and so now you learned it in a calm state, and now, now you you're have being to expected it. to remember it in a state of anxiety, and you can't do it because what you learned is dependent on the state you were in when you learned it. So the idea is to learn in a calm but alert state, and to deliver it back to reiterate the information back in a calm and deliberate state, mm -hmm. right? And so there's a couple different things that can help you with that. One is the heart math we just talked about, the inner balance, right. and the other is the emotional freedom technique. Absolutely. Right? And so as Raleigh mentioned a little bit earlier, we created a character named Johan, his nickname's Yaya, right. by the way. <laughs> and he is an animated character that Raleigh created, and together we created a script for him. Yep. And, and Yaya has a mom who's very kind and very smart, and she teaches him things, 
And then Yaya goes to his stage where he does magic tricks. That's correct. And he teaches his friends. And in this case, the website school test prep is Yaya teaching these children how to use the emotional freedom technique to never get nervous when they're taking a test. Exactly. And so essentially what he's doing is he's helping with state dependent memory by helping these children be in the same emotional state when they take the test they, than they were when they learned the material. Right. right, because if you're trying, like we just showed you the example, you learn it in a calm state and then you're told regurgitate it or there will be consequences. I don't know about you, but I get a little nervous too. <laughs> yeah, and so this is Im important information to know for your children, but also for yourself. If you're working at a at a business, you're working for a company, and you're expected to perform certain things. Right. It, it's very good to be in this calm, but alert state. You know, for as much time as you can. And some people, for example, like air traffic controllers. This is absolutely mm. required. They have a lot to remember. They have a lot of digital executions to perform. Right. And they have to find this balance in their in their state so that they can perform very important tasks. Right. And what we'll do is we'll put a link in the blog to schooltestprep.com where you guys can go check out Yaya and his video on, on how yeah. to uh, overcome test anxiety. And yeah, it's for kids, but it, it works on the same principle that yeah. we that Adult, we use adults our- Adults can use it too. Absolutely, so, absolutely. And so, Raleigh, just lastly, in, re, in regard to brain power, the issue of sleep is really, mm. really important too. If you, you could do everything else right that we just talked about, but if you're not able to sleep through the night, mm and get into REM sleep, mm. you're going to have trouble remembering things. And the reason is, is it's just the way the brain works. So you learn things during the day, and when you go to sleep, what you consider to be valuable or necessary for your survival, you're going to transfer into long-term memory. And there's mm. a little section in your brain called the dentate gyrus. It's a little quarter moon shape piece, and that begins to vibrate in theta, theta waves, when you're in REM sleep. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's choosing out which memories to make long-term, and it's sending them to the part of your brain that is long-term memory. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to get sleep and to get good REM sleep. So the PEMF device we mentioned earlier, right. that has actually has a program for sleep that is putting out pulsed electromagnetic forces mm -hmm. In the, in the variable cycles throughout the night mm -hmm. that is actually facilitating the various stages of sleep, including REM sleep. And mm -hmm. you can improve your memory from using a PEMF mat to wow. lie on because it was calculated by the scientists what types of waves were necessary to facilitate this. Probably you sleep a lot better, too. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to sleep way better. <laughs> and if you do it in conjunction with a really good um, sleep aid, yeah. That you know that has some melatonin in it and a little bit of vitamin D, some B vitamins, some other things. Right. You can combine that with the PEMF device, and you will improve your memory by by using that technique. Actually, it's it was there was a study do, done. I I'm the study guy. Uh, <laughs> it showed that if uh, you don't get sleep, your your brain physically shrinks. So mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah. Sleep. Yeah. Take care of your brain. Make sure that the brain cells you're creating are healthy ones, and make sure you got the right comprehensive nutrition, not just for the brain, but for circulation, because it all really relates to one thing, inflammation. Mm -hmm. Get something that'll get rid of the inflammation and make the other things work better. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that's about it for today. I Raleigh, would say Thanks so. for uh, joining and always, being part of it. Always. And um, thanks for all the post-production work that you're going to do when we're finished with this. Yeah. Raleigh is a, an engineer, sound engineer, and also really great with the computer programs that do the production that make this show look better in the end. What you actually are seeing is not the original production. Raleigh used his magic to fix it up. editing magic. And um, <laughs> so you won't see any of the times when we stumbled. But, <laughs> but if we were perfect, we'd have nothing to strive for. So don't forget that. Yeah, that's right. Keep that in mind. And as you guys uh, go through, we appreciate you. 
Don't forget to call us with any questions, liveforeveryoungradio.com. Any of the previous shows we mentioned will be there. That way you can go get caught up on what you might have missed. But, Bob, it's been great. Thanks very much, Raleigh, and thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to Live Forever Young Radio. We'll see you on the next show. See you, guys. Thanks for listening to Live Forever Young Radio. Check us out at liveforeveryoungradio.com.